Thank you, Last Kevin Farley. I'm pleased to associate myself with this motion as part of the regional group and to shine a light and constructively bring about some innovations and improvements when it comes to pre hospital emergency care <coughs> excuse me, and community health care. There is no doubt that our hospitals and healthcare services are under pressure, and mainly due to mismanagement on a grand scale over a number of years. I have had many battles with different officials in the HSE and the Department of Health during my work on the Public Accounts Committee. To say it is difficult to get answers or a clear picture of what is going on is a major understatement. What is clear is that they do not believe they should be questioned at all. Funding of our healthcare is not the issue. Our spending on health is an absolutely enormous spend and has increased from 14 million in 27 billion in 2017 to 23 billion in 2022. The major problem is the, is, is the manner in which the HSE is being managed. The COVID-19 period shone a very clear light on the problems we face. We had a handful of people in ICU who also had COVID. We had politicians using this as justifications to grind the whole country to a halt. And it, if this isn't evidence enough that our health system is broken, then I don't know what is. We need a new model, whereby not every knock, knock or fall needs hospital attention, where people can get scans and treatments in a local healthcare centre, where drips and other medications can be administered in these centres rather than having to funnel everything through the hospital system. Minister Donnelly was in Enniscorthy County, Wexford, last week to open a new primary care centre in Enniscorthy. This is a very welcome addition to the local healthcare system and should help bring about better, more timely and more efficient outcomes for the people of Enniscorthy and its surrounds. But at the same time, we are seeing plans for a 96-bed unit, in, for a new 96-bed unit at Wexford Hospital being kicked down the road further and further with no capital budget guaranteed. This motion talks a lot about the National Ambulance Service and the Sinn Féin motion last night, we endorse it on the basis that we need to do something seriously about the National Ambulance Service and its staffing issues. It is therefore an appropriate opportunity to highlight and commend all of those who are involved in community first responder schemes throughout the county and country. And in particular, from my perspective, those who volunteer in these schemes within County Wexford. There are important supports to be had for the National Ambulance Service. It is also important to note that the work being done in schools at educating young people in the basics of first aid and CPR training. Training like this is often done as part of transition year programme, but there are also schools which offer training to pupils in every year. The motion also calls for a CPR support app to be made publicly available to help increase the chances of a, patient's earlier, a patient earlier in the chain survival. It is impossible, particularly at current staffing levels, for the National Ambulance Service to respond instantly to every call, particularly at busy times. And I endorse my colleague Cahal Berry's no, uh, proposal for HEMs. Having a community first responder scheme in a parish can help increase a patient's chance of survival. There is a lot of work that goes into the operation of those recruitment, training, fundraising for defibrillators and other equipment, and organising rotas. In fairness to government, my call to remove VAT on defibrillators was answered, which is obviously a welcome development for communities, for community groups who work hard to ensure there are defibrillators in as many places as possible. People are living longer and with that brings all of the potential falls, accidents, illness, etc. that unfortunately is part and parcel of the ageing process. People in general are more conscious of their health and government campaigns over many years have encouraged people to act fast and seek help in emergencies. This inevitably means that calls for ambulance services are higher. 300,000 ambulance calls in 2022 with a 19% increase in December and January when compared to the same time last year. These trends are suggesting that pre-hospital care models which we are currently relying on may not be the most optimal or even suitable going forward. The motion is very detailed and calls upon the government to take a number of steps to achieve this. 
This is important. At the, it's important at this point to acknowledge the hard work, long hours, difficult conditions and heartbreaking circumstances which our National Ambulance Service staff have to cope with on a daily basis. Overall, I hope the House will join with me in supporting this motion and that subsequently the Government will implement the measures outlined in it as soon as possible. Thank you.